Once again, thank you very much for putting up this webinar. All participants, I wish us a very nice outing. Thank you, and God bless you. Thank you. Uh, thank, thank you very much, sir. Uh, thank Mr. you, sir. Vice Chancellor, sir. Hello. Um, my name is Ola Dotsun Mabinori, and I'm the co-moderator of today's uh, event. Uh, please, but before I move forward, I want to especially thank our uh, Vice Chancellor for that uh, wonderful uh, opening remark. Thank you very much, sir. We are here to uh, promote the image of the university, and thanks for your support, for always uh, giving us the courage to move on. Uh, please, uh, let me move forward to the next segment of um, uh, the event today which is um, introducing this, the keynote speaker, uh, the first speaker for today's event. That's uh, the person of uh, Professor uh, Dauda. He's speaking on economic implications of COVID-19 pandemic in Nigeria, priorities for intervention. Um, <clears throat> please join me to welcome Professor Dauda. Yeah, welcome. Good morning to you all. Can you allow me to, sh to share my screen? Can you allow me to share my screen? You are allowed, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, you can go ahead, ma'am. Because host, I, I clicked on it, it said host disabled participants screen sharing. Okay, okay, it's taken, you've disabled. Okay. Can you see it? Are we together? We can see it, we can see it. Okay. So sorry. Are we together? Can we see it? Yes, we can see it. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. We can see it now. Okay. We can. we can see it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I want to thank I want to start by thanking God uh, for the gift of life, for the opportunity He has given unto me. And to, and to every one of us to be alive today, you know, this is a challenging period. Every blessed day we need to thank God. And also, uh, we also acknowledge the presence of uh, the Vice Chancellor of this university, Bell's University of Technology. Uh, I thank him for giving me the opportunity uh, to be here and also for the support he has been giving to me and to all the departments in the university. I've been asked to, to be the keynote speaker at this first webinar, being put together by the Department of Economics, Accounting, and Finance. And I'll be speaking on economic implications of COVID-19 pandemic in Nigeria, priorities for intervention. I will start by looking at the outline. We focus in attention of five major points, significant updates of COVID-19. Can you my own? Current economic reality, impact of COVID-19 on financial pension, then we now conclude. You will agree with me that many people ushered in the year 2020 with great expectations. Unfortunately, everything just changed. COVID-19, which was first discovered in Wuhan, China in late December, became a global pandemic. Around March, it was declared a global pandemic. And since then, it has uh, caused overwhelming pain to for many people around the world, not only in Nigeria. Now, what we need to know is this. Let me quickly focus attention on the significant coronavirus uh, uh, update. Asset, asset, uh, this morning, because I checked in order to update what I have, 
Available statistics as of today made us to understand that coronavirus cases are now more than 107 million globally, about 2.3 million confirmed fatalities. And in Africa, more than 3.7 million cases have been recorded. More than 96,000. also on the continent. In our country, Nigeria, nearly 142 weekly, we lost more than 1,700 uh, people. As I said, the pandemic is exploiting and exposing deep structural inequalities in economies, in healthcare systems all over the world. It has brought great uncertainties. Thank God we have vaccination. And so many com uh, companies are working on, on the need to put up fascination that can help the world move forward. One uncertainty that the world has noticed is in the area of inequality in access to vaccination. The World Bank has been pleading with developed nations that the developing countries should not be left behind in this need to assess vaccination. We have asymptomatic cases all over Africa, and even not only in Africa, in many countries around the world that are really making it difficult for the pandemic to easily be stopped. Low level of testing have been recorded in Nigeria and in Africa. Access to the outside world has shrunk. Many people, especially in the academic world, that uh, what we do, we move around, attend conferences and all that. Many could not go to anywhere. We, we, are, we are stick, uh, we are talk rather, wherever we are. The, the COVID-19 in short has brought unprecedented uh, global crisis. That's, that, that, that's what we need to say at this point in time. I move on to the economy. I move on to the economy, current economic reality. COVID-19 has affected the lives of hundreds of thousands of Nigerians that's affected the livelihood of so many people. The pandemic has caused a wider long lasting effect on economic activities. It has slowed down economic activities in the country. Available statistics that we have before us shows that in 2016, the real GDP growth rate was 6.3%. In 2019, it was 2.3%. The second quarter of 2020, it was minus 6.1%. The, in the third quarter of 2020, it was minus 3.62%. Just look at what we have. At World Bank, according to World Bank uh, 2020, they put together a development updates on Nigeria and some scholars, they believe that real GDP growth recorded its deepest quarterly contraction since the 80s. That's what we have noticed. And it's shown, if you look at the chart before us, you can see six point just deep down, three point, you know, just deep down. And what do we have also on the chart? Just let, let's look at the effect on oil. There has been price shock, oil price shock, oil price shock, oil price volatility. As a January, oil price, you know, per barrel was 66.68, you know, dollars, February, $58.45 in March 32. But just look at what we what it had in April in, um, 2020, $14.28 per barrel. Thank God it's now around $60 uh, dollars per barrel now. But look at what we had. And th this, this has serious implications for the Nigerian economy in the sense that declining, it will result in all the declining oil revenue. That's what we have. When there is oil price volatility in Nigeria, because of the fact that we rely on that a lot, a significant proportion of our revenue comes from oil. When there is oil price volatility, as Nigeria will experience declining oil revenue. And that was what happened. If you look at what we have, some of the sectors that gained during the lockdown, financial sector, you know, Actually, again, during the lockdown, we have a paper that is coming up on financial sector, the impact of financial sector. Again, during the lockdown, telecoms, grow, coal mining, broadcasting, and all that. Unfortunately, during the lockdown, all refinery, you know, experience 
uh, uh, contraction, rail transport experience contraction, road transport experience contraction because of restrictions on, on movement. So what about the, and because of this, one of the things responsible for this is also fluctuation in the exchange rate, which affect the cost of production in the various sectors of the economy at that point in time, uh, you know, which is still anyway affecting the, the, the cost of production. Now let's look at the effect on, on unemployment. Just look at the bar, what we have there. Second quarter of 2020, we have 27.1% unemployment rate in Nigeria. But look at, uh, 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 sorry, uh, you know, we have unemployment rate in the third quarter of 2018, rather, 2018, we have 23.1%, which is lower. But we move on to second quarter of 2020. We, it, Nigeria recorded 27.1% the second quarter of 2020 and unemployment rate has been increasing don't forget that this is what the national bureau of statistics could, could capture we have so many people in the in the informal sector that have not been captured so that that means that we tell you that nigeria is in a big mess when it comes to the issue of unemployment many people lost their lives and are still losing their lives just because of the covid 19. what about the effect on trade if you look at that the effect on trade it has been declining the first quarter of 2020 uh 8.59 trillion second quarter of 2020 6.24 the third quarter 8.37 uh, just look at the, you know it's not something that we should be uh, proud of. We move on to the sectoral contribution. Sectoral contribution in the, the third quarter of 2020. Let me say this: the, the data that we uh, use there in putting this together, we rely on data from the uh, Nigeria Bureau of Statistics. So, sectoral percentage distribution. Look at what we have. Third quarter of 2020, services contributed more to GDP than any other sector of the economy. 47.64%, agriculture, 30.77%, industrial sector, 21.59%. You know, I said it earlier on that in the industrial sector really did not do well, did not really do well. Now, again, look at the top performing sector. I want to bring your attention to the fact that transportation has been hit very hard has been hit very hard just due to movement restriction. If you look at all that we have, the road transport minus 46.64, rail transport and pipelines 46.45, air transport minus 38.86, accommodation and food prices minus 22.61. So that sector needs to, uh, to be built up. Now we move on to inflation rate. We move on to inflation rate. Many people you know, lost their lives, you know, we, 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 we need to say something that economic disruptions brought about by COVID-19 has led to high inflation rates. In 2019, inflation rate was 11.39. In 2020, it was 13.21%. 13.21%. And this is not something that we should be uh, proud of. Again, the COVID-19 pandemic has also impacted food, prices. The spread of it into the Nigerian economy has led to food shortages, which has impacted household income and food prices. Food inflation as of 2019 stood at 13.73%. In 2020, it stood at 16.11%. And the bar, if you look at the bar, if you look at what we have there, we have the uh, first quarter of 2020, we have core inflation, food inflation, um, and and you, and you look at you look at we have inflation just just look at that keep on keep on increasing increasing but if you compare so that, that's what we have uh, there now what are the other current economic realities that you will, I choose to put together and not express in the form of chart we are foreign exchange rate devaluation as the oil price did the government reviewed the 2020 budget. And the Central Bank of Nigeria harmonized and devalued the Naira by about 15%. Overall investment inflows fell sharply by 56.9% to 8.7 billion US dollars in the first three quarters of 2020 from 
20.2 billion US dollars in the corresponding period of year 2019. Nigeria experienced depletion in external reserves. In 2020, external reserves averaged 35.9 US, 39.5.9 billion US dollars. Why is true that 43 billion in the year 2019? It's expected anyway that decline in oil price will lead to more extraordinary borrowing by the government. That's expected anyway. And what that will bring about, it, it will make the debt profile to increase. And many of us that have people abroad, we, we must have noticed something, that many of them have not been able to send money back home. That has impacted remittances greatly. So as of November 2020, well, there, there is something that happened. You know, all that I've been saying, it just like, whoa, 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 what happened to the Nigerian economy negatively? Something happened. The private sector experienced, you know, uh, so something positive. As of 2020, the total credit to the private sector, however, increased by 2.6 trillion. That means 9.7% to 29.3 trillion from 26.7 trillion in December. 2019. So in that sector, in that sector, Nigeria experienced, you know, positive uh, impact. There was a positive trend. Let me move on. Let's look at what happens to social services sector. I focus attention on health, education, and well-being. The pandemic exposed the fundamental weaknesses of the educational and health healthcare systems. Many educational institutions were under lock and key. Many from primary school, secondary school, universities, many were under lock and key because we did not prepare for this. We did not prepare for this. We did not prepare for remote learning. As the, the, the pandemic exposed severity of our health infrastructure inadequacy. It exposed the poor state of health infrastructure and healthcare facilities. Not only that, it exposed the funding constraints in education and health uh, sector. According to the World Bank, you know, the World Bank prepared Nigeria's development update and presented it in December. They came up with a report. They said the recession occasioned by the COVID-19 pandemic is likely to push 6.6 .6 million Nigerians into poverty in year 2020. And they projected that by Year 2022, about 11 million more Nigerians are expected to fall into poverty due to the crisis. Just look at that. And the COVID-19 also did something. It exposed the poor coverage of the social protection programs in Nigeria. If you just look at what is happening in some other developing nations, they have a well-structured social protection programs, but Nigeria, we could not do that. Many of us are living witnesses to what happened during the period of NSAS that the COVID-19 pandemic led to social unrest and that, you know, the palliatives, the, the government did not live up to its expectation in the distribution of the palliatives and that led to cures and so many other things in the system. And I want to tell, show us something. Myself and some of my colleagues, you know, the, in, the, in, in the Department of Economics, we, we carried out a survey, a nationwide survey during the COVID-19 pandemic. And this is the report of what we have. Household perception of changes in their incomes during the lockdown. Many households, you know, said that they've experienced unprecedented income losses and uncertainties because of business disruptions due to the outbreak. That was the, the, one of the things that, 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 that we got. More household participants' level of income has declined due to the coronavirus outbreak in Nigeria. We noticed that 41.9% of the household participants claim that their income declined significantly. Declined significantly. So that means the, the, we try as much as possible to compare the CBN data with what we did as a group of researchers. And this is what we have. The, the, the people really felt the impact of, of COVID-19 pandemic. Another report, another thing from the, from the 
survey that we carried out together as a, as a group, you know, we, we asked people, what, were, what, what, what happened? What were the factors that caused changes in, in their incomes during the pandemic? And many of them, you know, made us to understand that inability to earn income, you know, in order to make a living, you know, in Nigeria, many of us is, is daily, daily living. Many people earn their wages, earn their, earn their income daily, is, is, is daily, daily, they don't, don't go out to work every day, they will not work, they, they will not eat rather. Very few people are in the former, uh, are in the former uh, sector working. Many of them also, 22.2% of them said the closure of households place of work temporarily caused income to decline. And also 17.2% of them made us understand that there was a decline in demand for services you know, produced by their sectors. Also, we noticed that some of them, 12.1% says that there's decline in sales, in their sales. That, 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 that was why their, their, their incomes declined. Some 6.7% of the household said non-payment of salary caused the income. And I know that some of us, we, we know because the, during that time, many of us were not able to receive our salaries. Some, I want to focus attention now on some of the measures taken to cushion the effect of the pandemic. The CBN last year intensified its unconventional measures to monetary policy and direct stimuli in order to ameliorate the impact of COVID-19 pandemic on the economy. They did so many things, but I'll just bring out some of them. The CBN introduced a 50 billion fund under the target credit facility to provide soft loans for medium scale and micro enterprises and households as stimulus packages for those affected by the disruption caused by COVID-19. Apart from that, CBN also provided 100 billion sub Naira support for the health sector. It was a blessing in disguise for the health sector. That, that's something that I, I need to point out to finance research and development, the establishment of laboratories and supporting innovations toward producing test kits and development of vaccines and all that. The CPN also rolled out 1.1 trillion intervention fund to boost credit to support local manufacturing and import substitution across critical sec sectors of the economy among others. The CBN did so many things. I, I really do not want to list out many of them. The government also, on its own part, carried out reforms. What are they? The first one is the adoption of the Economic Sustainability Plan. They also brought up, they, they, they put up some things. It was during this time, during this period of hardship that government you know, opted to eliminate electricity subsidy, among others. Also, they, they removed subsidy you know, on petrol. Palliatives. Well, apart from the government, the, the, the private sector also came on board. Palliatives were provided by the private sector. Now, I move on to priorities for intervention. As far as I'm concerned, based on what I did, the, I used descriptive analysis. I want to say this, there are so many scholars working presently. There are so many work, uh, uh, scholars that have even published their findings where they use more sophisticated method, computable general equilibrium analysis, so many sophisticated methods to really examine the impact and just give the government a guideline as to what to go. Based on my uh, analysis, I, I came up with some, uh, in some priorities for intervention. Now, the first thing is to diversify the Nigerian economy. There's no doubt about that. That's a diversification of the Nigerian economy is very important. It is not a good thing for Nigeria to depend on oil alone. Anytime there is oil price shock, there'll be volatility in oil revenue. And when we don't have oil revenue, the whole system will crumble. It will be as if the economy is, 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 is in strangulation. That is not good. The oil price shock re-echoes the need 
to diversify the economy away from oil. Apart from that, the oil sector itself needs to be diversified. We need to learn from what is happening in some developed nations and, and see how we can also diversify the oil sector. There are so many things that can be done there. And when we do this, there'll be job creation. That's why I put it at number two. The second thing that the government needs to do is to create job. Create job is very important. When we diversify the economy, there will be jobs. The sector, the sectors, we, 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 we have opportunities to employ more people. And you know, if you don't work, you cannot eat. Even the Bible, you know, made us to understand that. So you want to eliminate poverty. There should be jobs. You want people to feel well in the economy. There should be jobs. So job creation is the second priority that I'm recommending. The third one is foreign exchange management. You will agree with me that the foreign exchange management, our foreign exchange, which has been devaluated, is breaking skills, is endangering what is happening in our economy. It's not allowing people to plan. Foreign investors can do not know what to do. It can be one today, it can be another thing tomorrow. So something needs to be done in that area. Foreign exchange management is very, very important. Apart from that, the investment climate must be conducive. Investment climate must be conducive. There must be the need to create investment climate where people will not be afraid to come to Nigeria to invest. People that are here should, should not be afraid to, to embark on, to, to go to work. Farmers should not be afraid to go to their farmlands. The issue of insecurity is something that government needs to, 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 to deal with. So it's very important. Investment climate, apart from talking about economic issues, there are security issues that government needs to tackle in that aspect. The, third, the, the next one that I think the government needs to focus attention on is also investment in infrastructure. Now, I wouldn't know how the, 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 uh, what I want to say here is this, whether public in, through public investment, whether through private investment, this must be done. The investment in infrastructure, without infrastructure, no nation can, can really develop. Nigeria needs that. We need ro good roads. We need good, uh, you know, efficient electricity supply. Infrastructure is very important. So government needs to do something in, in, in that. We may say, okay, there is no money. If it is through public sector that we invite the public sector, so be it. Let us know that we have infrastructure in the system. This will help businessmen. This will help every one of us to be productive. And by so doing, this will impact positively on the economy. The, the next point is institutional quality. Absolutely. Institutional quality. The issue of governance is very important for us to talk about that. It's yes, very yes, important yes. for us to really talk about the need for government to committed and visionary leadership is very important at all levels of governance. What do we need to learn that we have not already learned? Leadership yeah, is very yeah, important. Yeah, yeah. Corruption should be tackled. There must be political will among others. There must be political will for government to really go out and do something. For example, look at what is happening with the, with the, with the problem of headers in Nigeria that has really frustrated the farmers. We, we, we don't know what government is doing about that. There's no political will on the side of the government to do anything to protect the farmers. And when farmers can't go to, can't, can't go to farm, what will happen? There'll be increase in price, there'll be food shortage, and there'll be increase in, in prices. So institutional quality is very important. I'm sure, I'm very sure that when we get the aspect of leadership right, the issue of leadership in this country, we get it right, we have good leadership. Things we, 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 we move on, things we, we, will be better. Now, I move on to another to, to one. Apart from that, we have investment in human development, which is very germane. We need to invest in knowledge and ideas. Without, machines cannot just work by itself. Machine is people. So there is a need to foster sustainable investment in health system, including human resources and infrastructure. There's a need to invest in education, among others. When you talk about in, investment in human development, Health and education are very paramount. Apart from that, there is a need for, for people to be able to eat. If people don't eat, if there is no food security, not, nothing, people will not have good health. 
people will not be able to assimilate even when they are taught. They will not be able to generate good ideas. So that's, these are some of the issues that we need to, we, 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 are, we are saying that we are putting forward that the government should look at investment in human development is very important. Machine by itself cannot do anything without, without, without people. So you need to focus attention on people, invest in people, and they will give you the best. Some of the nations that we have today, East Asian Tigers, some of these developed nations, they invested in their people. And that's why, why they, 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 they are where they are today. A nation like Japan, without any, without any mineral resources, look at where they are today, just because of investment in people. So the government must invest in human development. It's very important. The next thing has to do with social protection programs. In fact, we are not getting it right in this part of the world when it comes to social protection to support the vulnerable this must be done there must be comprehensive social safety net programs which government must put in place then lastly i'm saying this that there is a need for nigeria to have long-term vision and medium-term development plans why am i saying this many of us we, 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 we that are working in this area you know ERGP, Economic Recovery and Development and, and, and Growth Plan, Economic Recovery and Growth Plan, which Nigeria, you know, used as a medium-term development plan from, 90 to, from 2017 to 2020. The lifespan of ERGP, Economic Recovery and Growth Plan, which is a development plan of Nigeria, ended in December 2020. This is February 2021. We don't have any plan. There is no medium term plan for Nigeria. So it is shocking. It's shocking. I don't know what we are doing. We need to have a medium term plan. We need to know where we are going as a nation. I want to thank you for listening. I want to thank you for your attention. Over to you, sir. Let me yeah. Uh, thank you, thank you very much, Ma. Okay. That wonderful presentation. In fact, you are indeed our professor of economics. Thank you very much, Ma. That was powerful, very impactful, and um, very insightful. Also, thank you very much. Um, please permit me to uh, uh, move to the next section or next segment of this um, presentation uh, of today's um, webinar. That is uh, introducing the second um, uh, speaker, who is in, place, in person of um, our uh, dean or the dean college of uh, management sciences, Bell's University of Technology, in person of um, uh, Dr. Mrs. Uh, Bibiana Njogo. She will be speaking on the economic implication of um, COVID-19 on financial sector or Nigerian financial sector. That's the um, impact of COVID-19 pandemic on Nigerian financial sector. That's what she'll be speaking on. Uh, she has um, 15 minutes to speak on this. We also know that um, it will be very impactful, very insightful, and very powerful also. So permit, permit me and join me in everybody to welcome Dr. Mrs. Bibiana Njogo to hold the floor for the next 15 minutes. You are welcome on board, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, please, we are waiting for Dr. Mrs. Njogo. She's getting her slides ready and then sharing her screen. So while waiting for her, um, I want all of us to exercise a bit of patience. You know, technology these days could be very fun. Okay. But that 
join us from now. Please, let's just exercise some um, patience. Thank you very much, everyone. I don't know if it's like we are. Delicia. On land boat, on the download is the first. Okay. I said we will be discussing COVID, the impact of COVID-19 pandemic on Nigerian financial markets. And the outline of our discussion will start with the objectives of this discussion. Introduction, Nigerian financial markets. On Nigerian financial markets, we'll be concentrating on money markets, capital market and foreign exchange market. Then we discuss the COVID-19 pandemic on Nigerian financial markets and conclude. At the end of the discussion, participants should be able to discuss how the COVID-19 originated. And they should be also to discuss what the financial market is all about and the effect of COVID-19 pandemic on Nigerian financial markets and measures that should be taken to reduce the negative effects of COVID-19 in financial markets. Now, let us look at the coronavirus COVID-19 pandemic. It is a defining global health crisis of our time and the greatest challenge we have faced since World War II. Since this emergency in Wuhan, China in December 2019 and the spread of it around other countries, the government of affected countries came up with some measures to curtail the epidemic in their economy. And some of the measures they introduced is that they were basically on lockdown of businesses, travel and mobility. And this now heightened uncertainties in the system and made the business cycle very complex. Looking at it, it now caused sharp declines in the level of output in many countries. But in the case of Nigeria, the disease was confirmed in February 27, 2020, in Lut, Lagos University Teaching Hospital in Lagos. The confirmed cases made uh, the federal government and the state government lock down businesses and for people to stay at home. And this pronouncement also caused decline on returns of some businesses in the country. Let us now look at the Nigerian financial market. It is an institutional framework that facilitates intermediation of funds in an economy. By intermediation, it is done through the process of mobilization of financial resources from the surplus unit of the economy to the deficit unit of the economy for productive purposes 
through financial intermediaries. For this purpose, we want to concentrate on the uh, money market, capital market, and the foreign exchange market. For the money market, it's a market for short-term loans. And it trades in money at call, certificate of deposits, promissory notes, commercial papers, and so on. All these are instruments that are being traded on the money market. But for capital markets, it is a long-term, they, they deal on long-term loanable funds. And the instruments traded there are debt instruments, preference shares, and ordinary shares. Another market we said we'll focus on is the exchange, the foreign exchange market, which deals with the determination of the ratio of the local currency to its counterpart foreign currency, especially in fostering international trade and transactions. It is worthy to note here that the performance of the financial market depends mostly on the prevailing condition of the economy within which it operates. And um, there are some factors in nature that disturb the financial market, apart from this uh, epidemic we are witnessing. Factors like regulation, speculation, shocks, political instability, and other risks, they, they naturally affect the financial market. But let us look at let us look at the effect of it on the Nigerian economy. Before the lockdown in Nigeria, Nigeria has started having the effect, the negative effect of the coronavirus pandemic in the sense that our people usually import goods from China. And the outbreak in China was assumed to have inflicted negatively on the Nigerian financial market, especially the foreign exchange segment before other segments of the Nigeria. Nigeria depends on a large proportion of imported goods from China, the home incubator of the disease. And the world is a global village through the usage of the internet, where for information is transmitted in seconds. I want us to know that the panic or the obstruction of the virus negatively impacted uh, on the Nigerian economy before we started having the effect. So for the purpose of our discussion, we are going to concentrate on money market, capital market, and foreign exchange. But I want us to note the circular from the SEC that capital market stakeholders on COVID-19 should be aware of the uncertainty and the anxiety. This was circular they released when Nigeria first noticed the first COVID uh, epidemic in the country. And this circular generated heat in the economy and made the stock prices in the market to decline sharply. Now, let us move to the literature search. Let us look at it. Some of our people in the academic world in this country have submitted something very good and interesting. The work of Ayadele Akiyede and Ojedele 2020. They analyzed the effect of coronavirus outbreak on the performance and the effectiveness of the Nigerian financial markets, concentrating on money market, capital market, and foreign exchange. And they made use of time series data for 60 working days after the first COVID-19 confirmed case in Nigeria. The authors applied exploratory ana analysis and making use of open buyback rate, all share index volume, and parallel foreign exchange market. They found out that, that there was a low positive correlation between COVID-19 pandemic and the money market. 
The same result applies to the capital market, but moderately positive correlation between COVID-19 pandemic and the foreign exchange market. I also want us to look at the Muiwa Sunday and FISAYO 2020 that investigated the connection between COVID-19 pandemic and Nigerian stock market capitalization using daily recorded secondary data that covers a period of three months. And the applied vector regression models. Their results show that confirmed cases of COVID-19 have mixed association with the Nigerian stock market equity capitalization in the sense that Nigeria witnessed steady marginal decline in the stock market capitalization as number of coronavirus confirmed cases increases. It will also be interesting to look at another Nigerian authors, Monday, Adenamo and Daniel 2020, that worked on the effects of a COVID-19 outbreak on the Nigerian stock exchange performance using GATCH models. Their result shows that COVID-19 had negative effect on the stock returns in Nigeria. Let us look at, I want us to digress a bit, a little bit, by looking at the work of Chiang, Arif, and Ivatan, 2020. In their study, they try to determine whether financial markets, for whatever reason, overreacted to COVID-19. Because their thinking is that not many have investigated in that aspect. So they delved into it and discovered, making use of a sample of 3,000 companies across 15 countries. And they found evidence that markets were overreacting. The financial markets were overreacting to the various COVID-19 events. Specifically, they found that financial markets showed signs of reversal in response to negative events like lockdown, confirmed cases, and deaths. But it will also be nice for us to also think, does it have any positive effect at all at all? I would like to conclude with that. I want us to look at the case of the uh, United States. Do they face the same thing that other countries faced? Honorly tried to investigate the impact of COVID-19 cases and related deaths on the U.S. stock market, allowing for changes in trading volume and volatility expectations, as well as a day of weeks effect. And the results based on GATS that applied shows that happy, happy in the U.S., at the emergence of the coronavirus, did not feel any negative impact on their stock returns. But apart from the China case, at the same time, the above model suggests that the number reported deaths in Italy and France have a negative impact on their stock returns. The lecturer is from University of Exeter Business School. I want us to look at another interesting case because we cannot conclude this, uh, we cannot conclude this uh, discussion without talking about the stock returns on, uh, in China. Ah, uh, what he at all examined the effect of coronavirus pandemic on Chinese stock market outcomes. Using panel data regression analysis and uh, confirmed cases of COVID-19 and 1,579 stocks data of firms stated in the Hang Seng Index and Shanghai Stock Exchange. Their results show strong negative interaction of COVID, of confirmed active and dead cases. So from the COVID-19 outbreak at the initial stage, market returns in China started declining. This implies that the emergence of COVID-19 outbreak at the initial stage brought about decline in the stock returns of the source economy. Before I leave the literature search, I want to discuss the case of 
Glutch, Paul, Ojanogwa, and Paul 2020 on the testing the nexus between stock returns and the inflation in Nigeria. In their study, they tried to investigate the stock market returns inflation nexus by controlling for the effect of COVID-19 pandemic in Nigeria from February 27, 2020 to February 30, 2020 using GATS. Their results show that COVID-19 pandemic increases volatility and distorts the positive relationship between inflation and stock market returns. They further submit that the negative effects of COVID-19 on the market returns and its disruption to the stock market inflation relationship may not die away rapidly considering that the duration of the pandemic is unknown. In our conclusion, we now have it that summarizing the literature search that the lockdown policies on the country affected the financial market and its economy. And we all know that this impact are assessed in terms of its effects on national gross domestic product, the GDP. More specifically, the lockdown policies reduced the Nigerian um, gross domestic product. In our recommendations, we have it that the decision makers should look beyond recovery. It's not enough to just work for the economy to recover. We should look beyond that. And there should be choices that we follow to be able to manage business. In a, case, in a situation that if one choice fails, we hook to another choice. Energy should be geared into managing complexity and uncertainty, especially in the areas of governance, social protection, green economy, and digital disruption. This will help to protect our economy. I uh, thank you for listening. Uh, thank you very much, our uh, indivertible and uh, ever eloquent team of the College of Mind and Sciences. Thank you very much. I would like to introduce Dr. Lawa uh, to handle the question and then answer the question. Dr. Lawa, over to you, sir. Okay, uh, thank you very much. I want to, at this point, I want to appreciate uh, our Vice Chancellor, Professor Yediro, who uh, associated with us here. I also want to appreciate the Dean of the, of the college and uh, mainly our professor, Professor Dauda, for the presentation. Now we are in the question and answer session. We have the opportunity to ask our questions. So whoever that wants to ask questions you indicate or you can type. So we call our two lecturers to attend to those questions. So question time. Within the next five minutes, we have opportunity to ask questions. And uh, if you cannot, okay. In the next five minutes, we have the opportunity to ask questions. Is that typed or you indicate by raising up your hand? Question time. Our two guest lecturers are available to attend to those questions. Question time. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning, Dr. Lawa. I Good have morning. a question for Prof. Okay, sir. Now, uh, having listened to part of uh, her presentation, I was not privileged to listen to everything from the beginning. 
but having listened to part of her presentation, I now wonder what are the suggestions she may I, have I, for I us. I my hand up the yeah, good Hello, man. Hello, sir. Okay. Can you hear me? I really, I want to know. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. We can, we can hear you. We can hear you. Now, he has made a number of suggestions for governments to do to help the situation so that we can get out of this pandemic earlier and faster. Now, as individuals and as citizens of this country, what can we individually do to get out of this system? My question okay. is coming from the fact that, for instance, the latest development on cryptocurrency is that government is saying no to cryptocurrency. Our youth who are doing cryptocurrency to run away from Yahoo, which is something that everybody is against. Now, government is saying no to cryptocurrency. What do you now want the government, the youth, and the majority unemployed to do in order to help themselves get out of this pandemic effect quickly? Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. Why we are waiting for Prof, Prof to respond to that? Uh, uh, let's have for, let's uh, excuse me. Let's have all the questions so that I will respond to them together. Okay, okay, okay. Next question. However, if you have a contribution, we we'll give you about uh, one minute to do that. One minute to do the to contribute. Okay. Good morning, everyone, and good morning um, to the presenters. And I just want to congratulate the presenters for a well-detailed analysis and presentation of facts. I'm Monye Buchuwebu. I want to make um, a few contributions to the first paper that was presented by Professor Dauda. And what I want to say is it's a very good presentation, well detailed. Um, it exposes so many areas of the sector and what the government should do. And I'm also suggesting that further research and further investigation on this issue should actually try to examine among all of these <coughs> options that are available <coughs> for the government to do which one should be a top priority for the government? Because when we look at the funds available at the disposal of the government, they are seriously in debt, the revenue is dwindling, and so they are limited or constrained to resources. So it's important that further studies should try to examine bottleneck sectors, those sectors that if they can unlock and invest heavily on it, it will be able to have a trickle down effect on other sectors. Because going through the total balanced approach of looking at human capital, looking at the financial sector, looking at job creation, looking at the youth, the resources might not be there at their disposal. So we need to identify the next bottleneck sectors so that if the investment is massively executed on that particular sector, it will be able to have a trickle down effect. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, while we are waiting for others to uh, respond, there's a question here. What can we do to boost job creation in Nigeria? That's one. Another one is saying, what can up upcoming entrepreneurs do at this moment? Is it safe to start a business at this period? That's another question. For Prof to respond. So, we are still waiting for more questions. Uh, can Wait. I ask a question? Okay, yes, go ahead. Hello. Hello, hello, go ahead, please. Um, thank you. Okay, thank you, the presenters. Prof, I thank you so much for that detailed uh, presentation with data. That's uh, quite enriching. Uh, my question is, um, or could I say a suggestion for further studies? We, how far has the CBN intervention and the palliative from government and private sector, and also the, when you talk about institutional quality, you talk about uh, social interventions. In Nigeria, we are aware that um, millions, billions, if not trillions of Naira 
has been distributed around by the Ministry of uh, Humanitarian Affairs. Can there okay. be a research to how far? Hello? Hello? Hello, hello. I'm, how yeah, far has too. this intervention? Okay, how far has this intervention? I mean, impacted on the lives and the level of poverty in the country because a lot has been done actually. And I know that uh, you said that relations abroad are not sending money. In some aspects, they were better off with this COVID because they had the social intervention there was quite uh, practical and everyone saw it. So most of them who didn't go to work. government intervention and the CBN intervention, how to be further research that we can get the data, just like all the data you gave us. Thank you. Thank you, Ma. Uh, now to Prof. Professor Dauda, please, can you please respond to all these questions? Okay, I, I want to thank all of you for attending this, uh, uh, this first webinar series in the department. Number one question, somebody has a question, what to do about cryptocurrency, the relationship with job creation. I want to say this, there are so many things to do. Our youth can get involved in so many other jobs apart from cryptocurrency. Cryptocurrency is not the only thing they can do. So we should not abuse or, or say because they are not allowing them to get to, 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 to do, to be involved in currency and all that. That's why they are in poverty. That is not a good thing. You know, I quite sympathize with the government in the sense that some of our youth, you know, are not properly educated in this area. Bitcoin, um, people are still trying to understand and all that. There is something that happened with game show, if you have been watching CNN and all that. I don't want to go into all this, you know. Let's allow the CBN to understand that is the regulatory body trying to, you know, study money supply and all that. Let them study what's going on in this area and try as much as possible to put structures in place that can assist the nation. So there are so many other things that they can do. They can learn a trade, they can go back to school, they can do so many things. So we should not just say, because government stop uh, or ban cryptocurrency, then people will not get jobs. How many of our people in the villages have access to internet and millions, millions, millions of, of our youth don't have jobs to do. So uh, please, it's not only cryptocurrency, there are many other things that can be done uh, aside from that. Then somebody has a question about what can upcoming entrepreneur do at this moment? The best time to invest is now, now, now. If you have not, if you have not been doing that, Please start now, do something now. So what can you do? Do something. Look at, look at yourself. What can you do with your hands? Can you learn a trade? Learn a trade. Be an apprentice is something that you can do. Sell, you can, you can sell products. You can, you can do so many things. So the, there is, this is not the time to say, okay, no conducive environment and I'm not going to do anything or government should do everything. Government cannot do everything. The time to start a business, the time to just move on is now. If you have people that are traveling abroad in your area, try to go to them, introduce yourself to them since you know that you are credible, you are honest, get goods from them. Go to universities, go to offices, start selling, add like 1%, 2% to them, to these things. People will buy. This is era of social media. Have an Instagram, pro, uh, Instagram that you can post. You post what you are, what you are, what you are 
selling the products. Apart from that, if you are knowledgeable in teaching of math, English, many students are told, you know, uh, they, they, they do not, uh, some schools are not, are not fully given the best to their people. You can go on and establish a coaching center. For example, in Nigeria now, many universities are operating online using LMS platform. Some of these students don't understand this. They are finding it difficult. If you are good in math, you are good in engineering subjects, this is the time for you to, to assist. I'm not saying you should charge them too much, but you, you, you know, if, if God is laying it upon your heart that you should not charge them, don't charge them. If you say you, you, you need money for transportation, you know, get money for transportation. Education is not, it's, it's expensive. You know, charge a small amount of money, teach them, you know, it, this is not the time to, to really look down yourself and say, I'm, you know, things are bad, I'm not going to do anything. So this is, I'm just encouraging you. It's very important to do something and approach banks, you know, be careful, because be careful so that the loans they will give you will not put you into a problem. First, approach your friends, your families, 50,000 and all that. You can get 50,000, go to Access Bank. They give POS, all this machine. That's why you have so many people there. It brings money. You got a cure somewhere, 50,000 Naira. They give you that, that uh, thing. Then you'll be, you'll be using it to make money. It's very important. Another thing, I like the I like the the, the contribution of Oyebuchi greatly so much. I like it. You know, what, while presenting, I said I, I, what what we did was to gather materials, then rely on data from National Bureau of Statistics using descriptive method. You know, the paper is just like a policy paper. I wrote the, 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 the I put the thoughts together just like a policy paper, no rigorous, you know, uh, mm. sophisticated. No, I, I did not use rigorous econometric techniques to do much. So there are people using computable general equilibrium, you know, analysis, so many sophisticated techniques to come out with something. Now, I want to introduce you to the Nigerian Economic Summit Group Macroeconomic Outlook. They presented the, the the, their report sometimes ago, and I really so much like what they put together. They use CGE to uh, examine what happened during that time, and they came up with four priority areas where government should focus attention on. The first one is macroeconomic stability. Yes, it's very important. That can fit into my own investment climate and some other things, security, institutional quality and all that. The second priority area given to us by Nigeria Economic Summit Group, you know, there are great guys that they are really working to help the nation. Policy and regulatory consistency. That's the second priority area that they say. The third one is sector reforms for investment. Sector reforms for investment. You can, you know, uh, uh, some of my points can come under this. Then the fourth one, the last one they said is Human capital development. Human capital development. That's what Nigeria Economic Summit Group gave us. They just presented it. Even I uploaded it for, for uh, you know, for, for, for uh, onto the platform for some students, you know, to use to read. So these are priority areas. So if we are serious in Nigeria, we can do this. If you are serious, we can actually achieve some of the things. Oh, no, all the things that I put as priority, priority interventions, just look at the four priority areas that Nigeria Economy Summit Group gave us. Most of those things that I listed can fall adequately into these four priority areas. I did this using descriptive analysis. They did this as use, using uh, a CGE and came up with this. So the, the thing is for the government and you know to, to just let us move on and be serious about what we are doing in Nigeria. Let's show commitment, you know, uh, it's very, let's be serious about Nigeria. We need to get to the promised land fast before it's too late. Another point, uh, I, 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 the need, okay, I've addressed that. Um, the last person also talked about 
the need to identify priority areas, data, and all that. It, it just boils down to the same thing. It just boils down to the same thing. Every one of us, we are saying the same thing. I, I've gone through the NES this year. I scanned through it, you know, scanned through some documents, literature. We are all saying the same thing. Diversify the economy. You know, there should be foreign exchange, foreign exchange management. Last week or thereabout, I was, I was part of LCCI, you know, economic policy uh, committee meeting. The same thing, the same thing. We are shouting, we are saying the same thing. So we should just uh, tell government, people that are at the hands of affairs, people that are advising the government, to so just let us work. Let's get down, sit down and do something. So that's my, uh, that, that, that's my little contribution at this point in time. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Thank you very much. We appreciate your re responses. We, I also want to invite uh, Dr. Njogo to contribute in the next uh, one to two minutes, especially on positive things COVID exposed Nigeria to and some other things. Ma, you are welcome. Sorry, I'm, okay, sorry, it's on now. Let me start by saying that CBN came up with Financial System Strategy 2020. And the strategy is all about looking inwards on our domestic business, how to grow the domestic business we have. So to me, this is the time for us to look inwards. What can we do in this country? It's not a time to say, I'm checking out. You want to go to a country where the grasses are green, it's time for us to look at the desert we have and see what we can make out of it. So looking at the domestic businesses in the country, each time I look around, I ask myself question. There are so many things that one can do in this nation. But the problem is that we have failed to sit down and look at what one can do to have returns in form of cash. Now, and I'm also, I'm also aware that there are some organizations and angel investors available that if there's a good business proposal, they're ready to finance it. CBN on their own, they have come out openly to say they are ready to finance any agricultural business related venture. Only if you can present a, a good business proposal that will make you win their hearts. Now, I want us to look at, they said when in every pain, they are still gain. And I believe in that. Because some that understand this statement, even if they are being put in prison, they believe that there's advantage in being in prison. And that was what made uh, Walesha Inca to write the novel, The Man Died. He wrote it while in prison. And there are so many prominent men that came out of prison, their thinking from the prison helped them to be what they are outside the prison. Now, I, we have discussed really the negative impact of this uh, COVID-19 pandemic. And it's all about negative in uh, financial returns, but there are still positive aspects of it. Just like uh, the keynote speaker mentioned that the telecommunications are smiling. Almost all of us, even people in the villages went virtual. And you know what it means? Buying data on daily basis. So I'm sure that there are returns in the Nigerian stock exchange. They must be smiling by now that they made heavy profit during this uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Outside that, there are still some green areas that we can 
tap into. And I know that some people have started thinking in that angle. The angle of producing our vaccine ourselves. I, I know that there was one occasion I was listening to somebody discussing and they're saying, instead of um, investing so much amount in importing the vaccine, why can't we produce one ourselves? Why can't we do it? Is it that we don't have people that can do it? And meanwhile, when you go out, it's, all, it's even our people that you see working in the area of the production of these vaccines that are trying to bring into the country. Let us also look at the mask is everywhere. When the pandemic started, I know that in China, they started production immediately. Looking at uh, the positive aspect of it, I started uh, bringing it in here. Our people have started producing it, and people are eating out of it. People are making a uh, huge money out of it on daily basis. And not only that, keeping them busy. Therefore, removing them from thinking of what is not important and necessary. Let us also look at, you know, some people, what they have in their mind is how do we recover? We shouldn't be thinking about only recovery. We should go beyond that. That energy should be geared into managing complexity. The era we are now is so complex in nature. Then our thinking, our focus should be how do we manage the complexity nature of businesses, of health, of everything that surrounds us in the nation at this point in time. So, and at the same time, some people believe that nothing is certain anymore or it's glaring. But I want you to know that if Nigeria has not taken a bold step to say schools, universities should resume, imagine what would have happened to some of our students at home by now. So in complexity, the complexity nature of it makes us to think. And by putting the COVID-19 protocols on ground and the school have started and people are gaining education, knowledge they paid for. I want us, I don't want to leave my discussion without talking about food. Food in itself is engine for life, for any man to grow. And unfortunately, during this COVID, because of the lockdown, people were unable to move out, to even cultivate. And that made us to have short, shortfall on output of maize, maize that makes uh, that helps us in the production of uh, chicken we eat. So it's a problem. So if I'm to suggest that this is even the time for us to go back to what we know how best to do and take advantage of it, especially in the area of food, let there be food first. When you eat, you can think. Thank you. Thank you, Ma. My prof, thank you. We appreciate your contribution. We, we have the opportunity. If you have uh, more questions, those questions can be sent to the Department of Economics, Bank, Accounting and Banking and Finance, Best University of Technology. Author. We appreciate you all. Thank Dr. you. I, 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 have just sent, I have just sent the report of the Nigeria Economy Summit Group to, the, to this uh, platform. So if you want, you can click on it to, that to download. It's the most recent publication on macroeconomic outlook for Nigeria, for 2021 in Nigeria. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Ma. Thank, thank you. you, Ma, for that. Whoever wants that document can click on it. It's available. Thank you, Ma. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you for those scholastic answers. As we are getting to the end of the seminar, I uh, would like to call Dr. Enilubo to give us both of thanks. Dr. Vatu, you, sir. Thank you very much. Well, I had a just to do at this point in time is to give the vote of thanks. And first and foremost. Hello, sir. Hello, please, are you here? Are you hearing me? 
No, no, it's not yet, yes, sir. Please, are you hearing? Are you hearing? Hello? We cannot hear no, you, No, we sir. can't hear you. We can hear you we now. We can hear you now. Okay, you can hear me now. It's more or less. Yes, yes. Th thank you very much. First and foremost, we want to give the vote of thanks to Almighty God who kept us all alive to witness all of us participating together in this first webinar of the Department of no. Accounting. And we can hear you. During this era of COVID-19, please, are you still hearing? Are you hearing now? We cannot hear yes, you, sir. Now, yes. Are you hearing, please? Yes. Yes, sir. We can hear yes. you now. Thank you. Yes. I said we give thanks to Almighty God, sparing our life during this COVID-19, oh. to witness the first webinar program of the Department of Economics, Accounting, and Finance. It was by God's mercy and grace we are all kept alive. We give thanks to God for that. Number two, we want to thank the Vice Chancellor of Bell's University of Technology in the person of Professor Ludele Jeremiah or Jedi Ron Coren for creating an enabling environment for the department from the college to have this first webinar. Sir, we want to thank you for the good leadership that you are giving to us in Bell's University. Number three, we want to thank the department, the college management, for putting this together. It is an effort we've been making for some times, and coming to reality at the present uh, management team of the department from college, we give thanks to Almighty God for this. HOD, we thank you very much. Our Dean, Associate Professor in the college, Dr. Bibiana, we thank you very much. We also want to thank specially, specially for the two presenters. Professor Dauda, you've made our day. You've come to the department and you are showing a very good leadership, mentorship for everyone in the department and in the college and the university at large. We want to thank you for a very wonderful presentation at this first webinar. Thank you very much, ma'am and for the supporting presentation delivered by our own associate professor, Professor, I mean, Dr. Unjogo. Thank you very much for that wonderful paper. I cannot end this vote of thanks without thanking the committee that has put this webinar together under the leadership of Dr. Lawa, who is here on Sabatica in the department. Together with all your team, we want to say thank you. And, <clears throat> To the ICT team in the university that has helped us in the technical area, <laughs> making it to come to reality, we say thank you very thank much. The you. ICT director and all the team, especially Mrs. Ama, thank you very much. And to every member of staff in the department, as well as all participants that have joined in this webinar, I'm very sure we have one or two things to take home at this webinar and i'm sure again that when we call on you and we are having the second presentation you will not hesitate in joining us i want to thank everyone for joining and i say to all thank you and god bless you amen thank you sir thank you sir that's good that's good of thanks when we started this program, we started with God. Therefore, we cannot end without you fighting God. Therefore, we call Mrs. Hassan to give us this new prayer. Now, over to you, Ma. You see your impact. Have you seen it? You people, you people, you people. You people. Your team tried.
Father, thank you for this. Thank you for making the first webinar series of the Department of Economic Accounting a success. Thank you for all the lectures we have listened to. We ask that the other webinar Hello, today that this will not be the end of the series of webinars. All the presenters, everybody that has participated, let your blessing rest on us in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Amen. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. I'm proud of our people. God bless you all. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What is that? Hello, hello. Thanks for being here. Thank you, sir.